Hello, GHC Youth. Well, hey, this week we are on part two of our series on messy relationships. And so we're going to look at the role that encouragement plays in lifting us up by injecting courage, by putting courage in to our hearts um, with God's word and his truth. And so for that, we're going to look at um, Acts chapter 9, and we're going to take a deep dive into God's word to see what he says about encouragement. Now, you probably know a little bit about the life of the Apostle Paul. We first hear of the Apostle Paul, he is a persecutor of Christians. He is hunting them down. He is having them arrested. He even is giving the approval, overseeing the killing of one of the first deacons of the early church, Stephen. Then he has this miraculous encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. It leaves him blind for a short period of time, but also it gives him and it parts in him um, a calling into ministry. You may not know that he had a quite a rocky start to his career as a minister, as a missionary. And we're going to take a look at that in Acts chapter 9, verse 26. Um, so speaking about Paul, it says, When he arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to associate with the disciples, but they were all afraid of him since they did not believe he was a disciple. Now, they knew his reputation. They knew he was a Christian hunter. And uh, maybe they had heard that, oh, well, he says that he saw Jesus and heard from Jesus and um, has become a Christian, but the disciples themselves were a little afraid. They were unsure. There may be times where you, like the disciples, or like Paul, both of them, I think, were feeling a little anxious. They're a little insecure, a little uncertain, a little fearful. Or maybe you had plans for your life, for your summer, um, these last few months, and you were sure that they were going to happen. Maybe there were plans from God, even. You were sure that you were being obedient to God, but you encounter roadblocks and obstacles, and they're not going the way that you thought they would go. Or maybe like Paul, it's... Other people are fearful and uncertain about you, and they're kind of getting in your way. You know, it can be difficult to face and then to overcome and persevere through whatever the situation is that you face. And that's why you need a guy like this. In the next verse, we see, verse 27, Barnabas. It says, Barnabas, however, took him, took Paul, and brought him to the apostles and explained to them how Saul had seen the Lord on the road and that he had talked to him and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. Saul was coming and going with them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. I don't know if you remember back in preschool, elementary school, and you do your worksheets, your assignments, and the teacher would write a little a smiley face or sometimes give you a sticker and it would say things like, terrific, or great job, or awesome. We love those little stickers, those little notes of affirmation, encouragement when we're young. And the truth is, we need to hear those same simple phrases of encouragement throughout our lives. Only they come in different forms and Oftentimes, the message gets deeper. We hear things like, I love you. Um, I'm proud of you. You're working hard and it's paying off. Um, or I know this isn't easy, but keep at it. Or hey, things are going to be all right. But if you don't hear or see that, it can be easy to let doubt seep in and cause insecurities and fear. You need a Barnabas, just like Paul. You need a Barnabas. Barnabas, he told the disciples, you guys are wrong about Paul. You don't know him like I know him. I vouch for him. I stake my reputation on him so you can trust me that you can trust Paul. You know, there, be, there will be times where you need someone to vouch for you. You'll need someone to stake their reputation on you. You will need someone to convince others that what they think about you is wrong. There will be times where you're turned away, you're rejected. There will be uh, people who thought you thought would gladly accept you, and they don't. And you need to be encouraged. You need a Barnabas. You need encouragement from your family. You need encouragement from your friends. You need encouragement from your church. You need encouragement from Jesus. Your life is always made better by a Barnabas. And Jesus is our big Barnabas. But he puts little Barnabases in our lives in different places. But what can you do if, if you're feeling discouraged, you're feeling frustrated, and you would love to hear words to pick, your, you know, pick up your spirit? You can start by being a Barnabas to others. 
it becomes contagious. It's like a little spark to a fire. And as you start to encourage others and they start feeling lifted up, well, uh, now they're not so down on themselves. They start uh, encouraging and lifting up others and it, it comes around to you as well. And you start to build a culture of encouragement. And so I would say this, be someone's Barnabas. I'm sure that you have friends or family, there are people that you know who are downtrodden, who are beat down, who are feeling persecuted, who are feeling abandoned, and they need to hear a reminder from you that they are loved, that God is with them, that it's going to be okay. And I'm still blown away by how difficult it is for so many youth to be encouraging. Um, I, I see some really bad encouragements that really are just low-key insults. Things like, hey, you're not as stupid as I thought you were. Um, some good encouragements, they lift up a part of a person's personality. They'll, you might say something like, hey, you're, you're so smart and you're so gifted. You're so talented. Um, but godly encouragements are things that you need to get used to. You have to practice saying, these speak to the deep parts of your soul with God's truth. And it might be something like this. Hey, you are insightful. And so when you share your thoughts about scripture, you help me to understand God's words better. Um, what a powerful thing to say to someone. What if we overcame that awkwardness to speak freely God's encouragements in the lives of others? It would literally change lives. Paul, after he was encouraged by Barnabas to the disciples uh, in the early years of his ministry, you see Paul now starting to encourage people. And if you read his letters to the churches, he's, in, he's writing letters to encourage them in their faith, encourage them in the generosity, encourage them in persevering. Um, sometimes they're the churches that he started, that he built. Sometimes they're churches, churches that he doesn't know. Sometimes he's writing letters to people. Let me encourage you to be a Barnabas. Let that encouragement become contagious among your friends, among your Bible study class, among your family. Let encouragement be contagious. When you've been encouraged by someone, now you go and encourage someone else. If you haven't been encouraged, why don't you start it by saying things to uplift some of your friends. Um, encourage others to encourage others. First Thessalonians 5.11 speaks to this. God says, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Keep it going is what God is saying. If you are willing to create a culture of encouragement in our church, it will spread joy and it will strengthen the faith. It will lift up the lives of others. So let's be a youth group that encourages. Let's encourage each other to love. Let's encourage each other to have faith. Let's encourage each other to serve. Let's encourage each other uh, to pray and to read God's word. Let's encourage each other to worship. Let's encourage each other by speaking words of God's truth to one another. Let's encourage each other um, by uh, in all the things that we've struggled with, that we've found difficult in our own lives, uh, in our own spiritual walk, let's encourage others in those same areas. And you know what? They will end up encouraging you back. Now let me end by encouraging you. Um, I love our youth. I love seeing how you overcome hardships and you grow in your faith. I love seeing how you discover how amazing it is um, to really get to know Jesus Christ through our uh, through his word. I love to see you uh, understand God's grace and love and forgiveness of sin in your life. I love seeing the amazing gifts and talents you guys have, especially when you're using it for God's glory. Uh, keep it up. Keep growing in faith. Keep pressing on through all the hard things because the reward is great. Keep on encouraging one another and building strong and godly friendships. If you feel awkward about encouragement, keep trying until it becomes second nature. And let's build this culture of encouragement in our church and see how God will encourage you and use you to encourage others. Let's make encouragement contagious at GHC. Uh, I want to encourage you to take part in our weekly uh, Summer Spirit Challenge. Uh, for a chance to win a $10 gift card, you can check it out here at this uh, Facebook group. And from everyone who submits that week, I'll, I'll draw a winner for a $10 gift card. Uh, so GHC Youth, keep on in the faith. Keep on encouraging one another. Uh, and I'll see you next time.